Every last Friday night of the month, cruise the airwaves and savor the sound on Radio Café. A place where we vibe to the rhythms and savor the beats from hidden gems to classic all-stars. On Radio Café. Kick back and enjoy the ride. Experience the flavor through sound. On Radio Café. Makwali Wali. Buenas noches, mi gente. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of La Onda Bajita Radio Café. I'm your host, Sochil Bernadette Moreno, and this evening I have the deep pleasure and honor of being joined by Winter Jendehai. Winter is a ceremonialist a musician, a moon dancer who works in the healing arts, and she blends the ancestral traditions of her own with the different indigenous traditions with which she has studied and is going to present to us today some of the works from your album, Y Los Sagrados. I'm very, very excited to to hear about all of this work and your work with Altar de Coscatlan. Welcome, welcome, Winter. Thank you so much. Really happy to be here. It's truly an honor to bless the space, bless the airwaves. Um, So I would love to begin our conversation with hearing about some of your own ancestry, the blood that flows in your veins, uh, those that have walked before you, if you can share with us about your own lineage. Yes, of course. Uh, So on my father's side, um, we have peoples of Black and Cherokee ancestry. And on my mother's side, Celtic and Italian. Mm. And so this embodiment in this lifetime has been the medicine of weaving of just all those different bloodlines and tuning into all the different ancestral paths of those bloodlines Mm. Mm. so important and when we confront our world the world in front of us it is so vitally important to connect uh, to that that ancestral lineage, that ancestral line, um, and and to connect not only you know by by knowing the names of our ancestors. Although I obviously please ask your grandparents, ask ask your parents, um, do that genealogical work, but also going deeper um, and and studying. Uh, the ways of one's people. Uh, so I know that though that's not the the full embodiment of, of the work that, that you bring, could you also speak about the works um, and lineages in which you have studied uh, some of the different cultural and indigenous traditions that are present in your work? Yeah. So it began um, with more of the North American indigenous uh, tribes and traditions, um, studying in the Native American church and just those different ways. And uh, even though it wasn't so specific to Cherokee, that's definitely where that part of my ancestry was very activated and just Mm. the traditions of uh, Turtle Island. Um, And then also having a study uh, with a Brazilian lineage, which really led me down there, which was such an opening into all the other lineages that are also present in Brazil. And so um, different studies with the Hunikuin, Yawana Wa, and also some studies in Colombia as well. Mm. And then one of my really main and big paths that's a pillar for me is also my moon dance lineage of study, which is the Mashika lineage. And also it is... Uh, bringing in some of the Lakota energy through mm-hmm. the structure of the dance. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all of these have have brought me through them into another way to connect with my own ancestry. Um, and I should also say the Candomblé tradition also uh, 
which mm. has really rooted me in the African ancestry. Yes, yes, the Katamble present. Mm. So for some of our listeners out there who, you know, might not be so familiar with these traditions or these ways, uh, could you elaborate on on what some of this study and what some of this path looks like? You know, what does it mean to be a ceremonialist? What does it mean to, you know, in, in the day-to-day life, embody this work mm-hmm. and, and, and this cultural weaving? Mm-hmm. These hilos sagrados. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's a journey. And, and for me, and I think for most people, it starts out um, with a path of healing. And as I was starting out, I didn't have in my mind at all that this would become something like my whole life, really. Uh, it's just a path of healing. And through the healing and the awakening that happens through the healing and the transformation, uh, just so much is revealed. And ultimately, it's bringing me back to my remembrance of self and my ancestry and uh, the magic of the unseen realms. And so I, I would say, first, the journey is just my own healing. And at some point, through the continuous showing up, then the study begins. And uh, through the first layer, Um, beginning to learn these ways a bit more and then begin to pay attention more to what's going on and the study begins. And through that over over years, building relationships and beginning to show up time and time again to the same elders and then, you know, they extend and doors open. And through all of that, eventually coming into that place of how does this birth uniquely from me out into the world again? Mm, mm, I like this, this, this birthing and rebirthing and these cycles. So let's just dig a little deeper, though. What um, from whether it's the moon dance tradition or or the katamble or uh, you know some of the the more South American uh, Brazilian traditions. What are some of the, the places and spaces that you find yourself, you know, from a temascal mm-hmm. um, to a hape circle? Bring our listeners along. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, I, I guess, the staple over these years, because other lineages have fluctuated, but the one that's been really rooted is the moon dance lineage. Uh, and this is, a, this is a, a prayer. It's four days, four nights, and uh, my dance happens every February full moon. So that's really become this anchor in this this pillar. And so just, yeah, it's, it's a very mystical experience. It's going into a portal for four days uh, surrounded by others who are there to pray. Yes. And it's also learning how to pray again. And being in the Temescal, which is the sweat lodge, and going in, and that's our way of cleansing and purifying ourselves, dancing all night long under the full moon, mm. uh, smoking our chanupas, which are the sacred pipes, uh, and learning how to work with uh, tobacco as a way of prayer and returning to the original use of this plant. Uh, and through that, receiving teachings and, and just going through that, that healing and praying for, for the collective um, so very, that's an example of just maybe a window into a mystical experience. Mm, thank you for sharing. I know that, you know, on my own healing journey and my own healing path as a moon dancer, and it's so good to share, share this space with you, my, my sister, um, that, yeah, people can be curious because it's one thing to... Oh, say yes, I'm a pipe carrier, I'm a moon dancer, I, you know, work in this way. Um, And it's it's such a a beautiful opportunity to then share a little bit more so that people can understand and and spark that curiosity in their own lives. And, you know, that that spark is something that I felt so present in your music Uh, and and when I heard uh, the song Familia, which is, you know, one of, let's say it's the title track of your album, it really brought together so many of these different hilos sagrados, so many uh, elements of this beautiful cultural tapestry, this beautiful uh, tapestry of healing. And so I was hoping that you might uh, bless us with that song. Yes, of course. Thank you. 
palabra del alcohol Todo es sagrado Rezo a la luna Mi alma canta La canción de la familia La familia de Pachama familia que reza al sol y la luna a la madre tierra planta sacradas me curan medicina sagrada me guía a lo largo del camino rojo dentro de mi corazón Vida es una oración, la oración es la familia, la familia es amor, amor es para tu mamá. Todo es sagrado, rezo en la mañana, el vuelo del colibrí y el poder de búfalo. Sagrado, rezo al sol, mi espíritu baila, la danza de la familia, la familia de Pachamama, la familia que Medicina sagrada me guía a lo largo del camino rojo dentro de mi corazón. Mi vida es una oración, la oración es la familia, la familia es amor, amor es para tu mamá. Todo es sagrado, rezo con vida, todo es sagrado, rezo con mi chalupa, para los ancianos y niños, el pasado y futuro, el corazón de la familia, la familia de Pachama. Medicina sagrada me guía a lo largo del camino rojo dentro de mi corazón. Vida es una oración, la oración es la familia, la familia es amor, amor es para mamá. Todo es sagrado. Pachamama, la familia que reza, la familia es sagrada, la familia es sagrada. Eww. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you. That was the voice of Winter Jandehai here on KPFA's La Onda Bajitas Radio Cafe. Oh, 
My heart is warm. My body is tingling. I feel the presence of La Familia Sagrada here with us. Mm, thank you, sister. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. It's amazing the power that music has to transform hardship, suffering, um, la pesadez, cuando algo es bien pesado. Y, you know, uh, as we're coming into this time, this this fall time, this time of uh, coming more into ourselves and and into, you know, the shedding of, of, of the summer, the shedding of all of those outward energies, um, it's it's always, you know, a, a miracle to me um, what music can do to just help soothe that process. Mm. So perhaps you could begin to share with us about process, uh, mm. you know, the process uh, that you underwent to create such a beautiful offering. How did you, como, como tejiste estos hilos sagradas? How did you weave these, these sacred threads? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, it's my, my musical journey. I mean, music was present for me my entire life, but this, cultivating this prayer and music becoming a way of, of transmitting my journey through healing, uh, this has been more recent and... The first years, it was it was very lonely. It was a very lonely journey. I was living on 80 acres of land in kind of the middle of nowhere and just really surrounded by the earth. And I would just spend hours really tuning in with my guitar because I had that space for it. Uh, and the songs, the songs would come, would come. And for me, it's a way of of painting memory, of painting mm. experiences. A lot of times, it, the spirit of the song comes as a visual thing. So to create it is how can I, what words and, and melodies can I choose that will really paint this picture? Hmm. And so it's been beautiful because this album is also like a journal. It's documenting my journey over so many years. And not only are the songs speaking to my unique experiences, but they are also a way of preserving the teachings and sometimes... I don't even know that I have this understanding of some kind of sacred technology until it comes through in this song and mm. then I, I realize that's, that's the teaching and then that song marks that for me in my life. So I can go back and track throughout the album, oh, this is the time when the Orisha started coming in after I went to Brazil. Or like, oh, this is the time that the sacred fire, I had that unlocking. Mm. So each song is kind of like that the journal and... Um, and so, yeah, the album really holds that for me mm. for this chapter of my life over the last nine years. And talk to us about songwriting. You know, what does that process look like for you? Uh, you know, are, are you just alone writing? Does it come as, you know, a, a one, one inspiration of words that then forms a song? Yeah, how is that for you? Each song is its own spirit. So like people, everybody, different personalities. And so uh, to always the guitar comes first. Um, when I used to write, it would be, I, usually if I was playing guitar and playing songs I knew, and then towards the end of a session, all of a sudden like some kind of chord progression would come through. Uh, and, but some songs, they come in all the way. The spirit enters and I write it in that sitting and it's complete. Other songs, it takes months and I'm like, I, I'm learning and I actually can't progress in writing the song until I actually learn the lesson that the song is teaching me first. And then as soon as I realize, because it's inviting me to unlock something, as soon as I finally realize that, then all of a sudden it completes the line or something. Mm. So if it, it fluctuates, it's just they all have different personalities. Oh, I just got chills. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Feeling the different energies of the music. Yeah. So... If you could now talk to us about how you use music to connect to 
your ancestors, to your mm -hmm. ancestral line. As we're talking about this time, this is the time when the ancestors mm -hmm. um, have the ability to communicate with us, when the veil is thin, um, when we can honor them in, in fullness. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about how music plays a part in that for you? Yeah, of course. And, and one song in particular um, is really an example of kind of how mm. profound just these songs, the intelligence within them, um, and also like how much it's not me. Um, but my song, El Sueño, it came to me one day. I just had this vision of these two grandmothers, and I knew that they were my ancestors. And uh, one of them was uh, from Africa. One of them was indigenous from Turtle Island. And I was just shown like this, uh, this scene and just, just saw the picture. And I basically just had to kind of be in that vision and look around and gather the information and then put it into the words. And then even for one of the grandmothers that came, I couldn't seem to figure out what I was exactly trying to track uh, and it took me a while, it took me a few days to like keep going into that vision and looking around. And finally I realized that it was meant to look up. And as soon as I looked up, I saw the eagle circling mm. above her. And the teaching within that was perspective. And so then I knew how to complete the line of that song. And so, so that's just, that was me receiving the song based on an ancestral vision. And then maybe like a year later, some time later, uh, my grandmother was uh, moving in with my mom, and so uh, my mom was going through her stuff, and I inherited her box of sacred items and mm. tarot cards, and she did a lot of dream work. And in that box, I found uh, a dream she had written down, and her dream correlated with the visions that I had had. Yeah. And that's why the song is called The Dream. Um, because like it came to me as just ancestral visions and then to find out later my grandmother my mother's mother had a dream that she had tracked and so this was in her like last year her time of transitioning and I would play her the song mm -hmm. and she didn't know we never talked about it but I would play her the song and she would get emotional and I played it for her while she was also transitioning in her last days so just to show how deep uh, and just the intelligence of, of these songs. Ay, ay, presente, presente. What was her name? Anne Mason. Anne Mason, presente. Mm. Well, would you mind sharing El Sueño with us? Slaza Kamati. She shows me 
Sochil Bernadette Moreno, and you are listening to La Onda Bajitas Radio Café. That was the song El Sueño. What a beautiful, beautiful dream. Mm. Yes, may, may the ancestors be present in a good way. Nikanka, Nikanka, presente. Mm. Winter, I'd love now to speak about some of your works uh, when you're not playing guitar and transmitting spirit through music. I know that spirit moves through you uh, in, in many other ways and there are many offerings that you bring to the world. Um, could you share a bit of the work of Altar de Coscatlan and, and how you move in this great, great world? Yeah, Altar de Coscatlan is really... Uh, just the place that I hold all my work under, uh, just to have it be less personal to myself and to give it the, the altar, uh, f to hold all of the offerings and bring them all together. And so what's really rooted in all the work that I hold is the directional teachings uh, of the medicine wheel, the seven directions. And I weave those in so many different ways, whether it's in ceremonial offerings for community to honor the seasons, honor the energies that are present for that time of year. Uh, it, so sometimes it looks like that. I also have a one-to-one -one mentorship program, which is a six-month container where I'm working uh, personally with, with each person and uh, sharing these teachings of the medicine wheel and of these ways of life and then also being there to support how one applies those teachings to actually 
uh, become a structure and a system in which to live and navigate. And I always speak about this of becoming the altar of our own life and that we are at the center and, and the more that we can do our own work and, and tune in with within, then that's what we send out and that's how we cultivate a, a prayerful path. And so that's kind of the thread of all my offerings, but it can look like a mentorship or it can look like a ceremonial offering, maybe with cacao, maybe a drum journey, always weaving music into it. Uh, rites of passage offerings also to honor dif- different initiation moments in someone's life. Uh, be holding space for uh, someone soon who wants to step into an initiation or passage of just womanhood. She's 18. Mm. Mm. And so just marking these really important moments that uh, in our society have been kind of erased in a lot of ways and just bringing that back and just the magic and medicine of the earth and how can we bring that forward. So that's the thread of all that I offer. Mm, it's so important that that there's someone to help usher in these new times of our lives uh, and to help guide because I think that there, I know for me, I really value the people that have stepped into my life as teachers or as guides and and we all need those. And so what a blessing that that you offer that and can share that with people. So listeners, if you feel called, know that connecting uh, to Winter's album, Y Los Sagrados, is not the only way uh, to connect with her medicine and, and her magic. Yes. Uh, so in that idea that, you know, we all have to go through different stages and, and, and moments of learning, I know that you're about to step into some travels and some, some time of study. Can you share with us a little bit about, you know, what's coming next for you? Yeah. And so also just as one example of what it even means when I speak about these earth-based teachings and like how to integrate it. So for example, for so many years, the winter months, which I understand to be the time of introspection and the cocoon and going in, inside. And those are the months that I dedicate to my study. The, the rest of the year, there's more offering and output from me into the world. But the winter is the time where I can really go in and tend to myself and study, which keeps the, the necessary balance in the work, uh, to, you know, to remain a student always at the same time. And so I'm really looking forward to going to Brazil for Mm -hmm. a little over two months Mm -hmm. uh, coming up. And there I will be studying with uh, some of our indigenous relatives. And um, yeah, from there going to a festival that will also have a lot of just different indigenous leaders and just to be able to heal and receive. It doesn't always mean that the study is active. You're not not necessarily sitting there with a notebook or something, but just the experience and the transmissions being in that, having that be surrounded, it's things get soaked up. Um, And then at the end of the travels, as I do every year, I'll be going to the the moon dance there for my seventh year. So, Mm, mm. Oh, well, congratulations and so many blessings on your path, on your studies. Uh, My time, the three months I was able to spend in in study with the Yawanawa people uh, gave me the the fortalescence to meet the moments um, that that I'm facing now. And I, I wish... For that and beyond, uh, that for you, uh, that 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 study, that time, that growth, uh, and just that breathing uh, mm-hmm. can can really give new life to all that is to come. And I am so excited to see what's on the other side. Thank you. Me too. That you know, the music is always just a reflection of where I am in my journey. So this album really documents this first part where it's all finger picking. I didn't really strum, but now after all this time sitting with the Huni Queen, I've the strum has come. Mm. And so I look forward to really cultivating that and having that as a, a, a the next wave of my evolution with music. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm sure our ears and airwaves will be blessed by that. So as we are bringing our time to a close, I would love to invite in El Corazón de Fuego. Uh, This is a song that really got me inspired and and really helped me remember some of of, uh, just the different ways that that the Mexica path 
uh, can also embody other other traditions and other elements as well mm -hmm. how the Lakota and the and the Mexica can work together and mm -hmm. play off each other and uh, and I feel that that's so present in my life and the life of so many in my community and, and I was hoping that we could end with Corazón de Fuego. Yes, such a, a warm song, a fiery song. And I do want to share that some of the lyrics in here are coming from a traditional uh, song that I learned within the TP uh, in Native American church. And so just to say that part, just to give uh, honor to that, and that then the rest of the lyrics are all woven in with my own. So, yeah. <laughs> KPFA's La Onda Majitas Radio Café. I am Xochitl Bernadette Moreno with a very, very warm heart coming from that Corazón de Fuego. Eso, Tlazo Camati Winter. 
Yes. Mm, mm. Oh, my good listeners, my, my dear, dear relatives, we are coming to a close of this time. And I'm sure that your ears are, are buzzing and vibrating from all of these blessings. And Winter, if you could share with our listeners how they can connect to you, how they can connect to Altar de Coscatlan, how they can uh, tejer with these hilos sagrados, how can they weave with these sacred, sacred threads, your new album? I'm, yeah, so grateful that the day has come that I can really share that it's uh, available on all streaming platforms. So, so yeah, looking up my name, uh, you know, it's on Spotify, Apple Music, um, and to spell my name, winter, like the season, and then Jendehai, J-E-N-D-A-Y-I. And so you'll find it at that name through um, on whatever stream platforms. I also released the album on Bandcamp. And Bandcamp is a really great platform that supports independent artists. And there it's a little bit more personal. You're able to purchase the album. It's just $13 and uh, really download it and have it. And then there's also a big note that's really just the, the letter and the words that I wanted to express with this uh, album and just really giving thanks. So Bandcamp is a more personal place for that and also under my name, uh, but it is available on all streaming platforms. Mm. Uh, and then for my work, my offerings, Alter de Coscatlan, A-L-T-A-R-D-E-K-O-S-K-A-T-L-A-N. So that's also my Instagram handle where I promote everything, but also that's a website. Mm -hmm. So if you do alterdecoscatlan.com, that's where you'll find my, my altar. And there it has all of my offerings and also links to my music. Oh, wonderful. I'm so excited. And for our listeners' pleasure, um, we'll actually be, once we close our time here, uh, going out with a song, uh, Ondas du Mar. And that's also a little ode to La Onda Bajita, uh, the show. And if you could just say some a uh, few words about that song. This song is really special to me. The, the album really contains songs of the spiritual journey. And even though they, they capture so much, there's a spiritual study really in them. And this song really holds the emotional pillar of the album. Uh, you know, it's, it's to the waves of the sea, singing to Yamanja, and this also these salt waters within us, such as our tears. So this song is the only one on the album that really came through from very excruciating pain and heartbreak and grief. Uh, and, but it's so beautiful. It's important that this album captures the wholeness of our human experience. And I'm so grateful to have this captured, to have the sounds of the waves there, and just to hold that pillar of the, of the waters. So just inviting everyone as, as you listen uh, to maybe allow the allow it to to bring you into your internal waters, your feelings, the softening, and just really receive the medicine. Because as I sing in in the song, uh, we have we have the salt waters, which is our tears. But at the same time, salt is purifying. Salt is uh, can can help us heal. And so also, if there's something that you want support with in healing and that you can connect with, allow the song to to help you. Mm. Spuma, 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 
Conchas me chamo Conchas chama Estrelas do mar me chama De sonhos profundos Lágrimas nos meus olhos Chorando para mim amar me Onda 
Mm-hmm. It's the sea water. Yes, the woman of the salt waters. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm, thank you. Oh, winter. What a blessing uh, to have brought your music uh, to our airwaves, to this space, to these ondas. If you would please close our time with a blessing. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for this connection. I really appreciate you and the invitation to be here. So thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who's been listening. It's such a dream come true to even reach this point that I know that you're listening to this. Uh, so thank you for sharing this moment of my journey and, and my path. And I hope that it touches you and inspires you in some way. And just wanting to give give thanks to all of the elements and all of the directions and all of the nations around the world, all of our indigenous traditions, and uh, give thanks to all of all of those traditions which have been woven into this album, all the pillars that these songs are holding, all of my ancestors as well. And just giving so much gratitude for that path of remembrance, that path of awakening, and and that internal, that seventh direction of within of the heart, which is just really holds all the wisdom that we seek. And may all of us find that journey within ourselves where we can receive all that we need. So giving gratitude in that way to the medicine wheel and thank you so much. Lasokamati. Mm, no chansiwat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was Winter Jendehai coming to us for this week's edition of Radio Olin. Radio Café, here on KPFA's La Onda Bajita. I'm your host, Xochitl Bernadette Moreno. Thank you so much for tuning in, mi gente. Muy buenas noches. Makuali, uali. You. You. And that's a wrap. <laughs>